Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this special celebration in this third Sunday of Easter. Today, we celebrate the Sunday Mass, but also the crowning of our Blessed Mother. During the last years, we dedicate a special celebration for honor our mother. She is the queen of the universe. And today, all the children of our prep program come together, pray together with us as a, as a spiritual family and honor her with these flowers and with a crown. Let us prepare our heart for this special celebration. In silence, we recognize our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kiri eleison. Christe eleison. Kiri eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may be looked forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and one to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the disciples said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. 
the God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. del libro del Apocalipsis del Apóstol San Juan. Yo, Juan, tuve una visión en la cual oí alrededor del trono de los vivientes y de los ancianos la voz de millones y millones de ángeles que cantaban con, vo con voz potente. Digno es el Cordero que fue inmolado de recibir el poder y la riqueza la sabiduría y la fuerza, el honor, la gloria y la alabanza. Oí a todas las criaturas que hay en el cielo, en la tierra, debajo de la tierra y en el mar, todo cuanto existe que decían, al que está sentado en el trono y al cordero, la alabanza, el honor, la gloria y el poder, por los siglos de los siglos. Y los cuatro vivientes respondían, Amén. Los veinticuatro ancianos 
se postraron en tierra y adoraron al que vive por los siglos de los siglos. Palabra de Dios. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that, that, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already down, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he took it in his garment, for he was lightly clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from, sh from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it, on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, 
Do you love me more than this? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a special celebration as a parish community, as a spiritual family, because each Paris, each Catholic Paris, would be spiritual family. And it's a special celebration also because our children are here with us. And today we celebrate this Mass with our catechists, volunteers, parents, and children of our prep program. And it's a feast of our faith. And just in this day, Jesus invites us to love him. Many times I repeat to you, I repeat to you as a parent, I repeat to the children when they came to adore Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to love him. If we don't love Jesus, we are not Christian. If we say, I am Christian, but I don't love Jesus, you are a liar. That is not true. The authentic Christianism is when you open your heart to Jesus Christ, and when you love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Today the Lord asks to us, do you love me? And we need to respond to this question. It's an important question. As a parent, you need to respond to this question before Jesus. If your answer is, yes, Lord, I love you, the Lord said, take care of my children. Not your children, my children. Take care of them. Teach them about my teachings. Teach them about the personal relationship with me. Give to them a good example of faith. Jesus asks to us, do you love me? And as a Christian people, if we respond, yes, Lord, I, I love you, we need to demonstrate this love with our witness to our children, our witness in the middle of the world. The key of our Christian faith is love to Jesus Christ. And if we want to love Jesus, we need to look at our Blessed Mother. Because just her love, her son, with authentic love, not just mere sentimentalism love or feelings. She loves her son with all her heart with all her mind, with all her soul. And we need to look at our Blessed Mother. I invite you, during this month of May, dedicate a few minutes every day 
to honor her, to pray to her. And it's more beautiful when you pray together as a family. Remember, if the family pray together, remain together. Look at the Blessed Mother and imitate her in her love to Jesus Christ. Today, our children, your children, offer to her flowers. That flowers represent our love to her, but also our intention to offer to the Blessed Mother our good actions, good works of mercy. That is the flower that the flower represents. Today, let us ask to the Lord, Lord, help me to love you. And also say to our Blessed Mother, Blessed Mother, intercede for me and pray for me because I need your prayer in order to love your son with all my heart. Now, a few words in Spanish. Hoy es un gran día. Nos reunimos como familia espiritual, como parroquia, y nos reunimos tanto padres de familia como catequistas, voluntarios, y los niños de nuestro programa de catequesis, aunque sé que no están todos aquí. Pero es un gran día porque nos reunimos a celebrar nuestra fe y a honrar a nuestra Madre, la Virgen María. Y hoy precisamente el Señor nos está preguntando si le amamos, si Él es el centro de nuestra vida. Por tres veces le pregunta, Pedro, ¿me amas? La misma pregunta nos la hace hoy a nosotros, ¿me amas? Si nuestra respuesta es, sí, Señor, Tú sabes que te amo, tendremos que demostrarlo con obras. Si como padres ustedes le dicen a Dios, Señor, te amo, el Señor les va a decir, demuéstrame ese amor, educando en la fe a tus hijos, transmitiéndole mis enseñanzas a tus hijos. Porque la transmisión de la fe empieza en casa. No es cuando el niño viene a la catequesis a los siete años y ahí se lo dejo al padre y a los catequistas que se hagan cargo de él, Así descanso un par de horas a la semana de tener a estos chiquillos. La fe empieza en casa. Y si tú le dices al Señor, te amo, demuestra eso enseñando a tu hijo a rezar. Enseñándole a tener una relación personal con Cristo. Enseñándole a ver la fe como algo importante. Enseñándole que los sacramentos son necesarios para la salvación, para la salud del alma. Si tú le dices al Señor, Señor, te amo, que no sea un mero sentimentalismo barato, que no sea solo un sentimiento, ahora siento que te amo, mañana ya no, pero ahora siento que te amo. Que nuestro amor sea un amor verdadero. Y amar implica responsabilidad. Y tenemos la responsabilidad Ustedes como padres y todos nosotros como comunidad parroquial de transmitir la fe a estos niños. Y solo la transmitiremos si nosotros la estamos viviendo. Si estamos siendo testigos de esa fe, ellos nos seguirán. Si para nosotros no es importante, para ellos tampoco lo va a ser. Y tendremos que contemplar mucho de nosotros ya abuelos y ancianos, ver a un mundo roto porque ha cerrado el corazón a Dios y nos hará sufrir mucho. Que por lo menos hoy le digamos al Señor, Señor, no te amo, pero quiero amarte. Y quiero amarte como María. Porque el amor más auténtico de un cristiano a Dios lo encontramos en ella. Y hoy cuando los niños le ofrezcan flores a la Virgen, esas flores también representan nuestro deseo de amar a Dios con buenas obras. 
y no solo con bonitas palabras. Pidamos al Señor la gracia de transmitir la fe y de tomarnos en serio la enseñanza en la fe. Es muy triste cuando escucho, Padre, mi niño no puede ir a catequesis porque es más importante el partido de fútbol o es más importante una película que vamos a ver o es más importante una actividad que tenemos. Después recogerás lo que has sembrado. Pues pidámosle al Señor la gracia de sembrar bien, de sembrar lo más importante, la fe, el amor a Dios, porque es lo que les salvará la vida a estos niños para enfrentarse al mundo tan difícil en el que ahora nos encontramos. Pues que el Señor nos conceda la gracia de ser verdaderos transmisores de la fe a nuestros niños, a nuestros jóvenes. Hacemos un momento de oración en silencio. Let us pray in silence. Profesamos juntos nuestra fe. Creo en un solo Dios, Padre Todopoderoso, Creador del cielo y de la tierra, de todo lo visible y lo invisible. Creo en un solo Señor Jesucristo, Hijo único de Dios, nacido del Padre antes de todos los siglos, Dios de Dios, luz de luz, Dios verdadero de Dios verdadero, engendrado, no creado, de la misma naturaleza del Padre, por quien todo fue hecho, que por nosotros los hombres y por nuestra salvación bajó del cielo, y por obra del Espíritu Santo se encarnó de María la Virgen y se hizo hombre, y por nuestra causa fue crucificado en tiempos de Poncio Pilato, padeció y fue sepultado, y resucitó al tercer día según las Escrituras, y subió al cielo, y está sentado a la derecha del Padre, y de nuevo vendrá con gloria para juzgar a vivos y muertos, y su reino no tendrá fin. Creo en el Espíritu Santo, que procede del Padre y del Hijo, que con el Padre y el Hijo recibe una misma adoración y gloria, y que habló por los profetas, Creo en la Iglesia que es una, santa, católica y apostólica. Confieso que hay un solo bautismo para el perdón de los pecados. Espero la resurrección de los muertos y la vida del mundo futuro. Amén. Through the mystery of God's presence among us, let us confidently make our needs known to the Most High. For the Church, that the will to obey God in all things shines like a light of truth to inspire those who suffer persecution for their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who sit upon thrones or live in palaces of power, that they look more deeply to see how the needs of the poor might be met. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos los alejados de la comunidad cristiana, para que encuentren reconciliación y paz, roguemos al Señor. Te rogamos, óyenos. Por los enfermos y las personas que los cuidan, para que sea una fuente de alivio y consuelo mutuo. 
Roguemos al Señor. Te rogamos, Señor, óyenos. Por los reunidos ante esta mesa, para que reconozcan al Señor en todas las personas a su alrededor. Roguemos al Señor. Te rogamos, Señor, óyenos. We pray for the end of the work, especially in Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the end of the abortion, of the euthanasia, of the imposition of the gender ideology. Let us pray to the Lord. Rezamos por esta comunidad de fe para que seamos verdaderos transmisores de la fe a nuestros pequeños, a nuestros niños y jóvenes. Roguemos al Señor. Pedimos por nuestras familias para que abramos el lugar a Dios que le corresponde, el primero, y que ojalá que en este mes de mayo lo hagamos de mano de la Virgen María. Roguemos al Señor. Kind and merciful God, you feed your flock with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear the prayers we bring in the name of the same Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time about all to laud you yet more, more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are through open to the faithful for his death is a ransom from death, and in his risen the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every, land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, 
When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, "Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant." Which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Por Cristo, con Él y en Él, a ti Dios Padre Omnipotente, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, todo honor y toda gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Fieles a la recomendación de nuestro Salvador, y siguiendo su divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos del mal. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. My only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This is the most important moment in this celebration, our personal encounter with Jesus Christ, because he is truly present in this sacrament of the Eucharist. It's not a symbolic way. It's a truly present. And now when you come, remember, is Jesus Christ your God, your Savior, and you need to be prepared in order to receive him. You need to, you need to remain in a state of grace without moral sins in order to receive Jesus Christ. With faith and a humble heart, come and receive your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Es el momento de la comunión. Y es el momento del encuentro personal, real, con Cristo. 
La Eucaristía no es un mero símbolo, es Cristo, el Hijo de Dios, que realmente se hace presente. Así que acércate con un corazón preparado. Si eres consciente de que estás en pecado mortal, no agraves tu situación ante Dios, no comulgues. Si quieres acércate y recibe la bendición. Es el momento más sagrado. Si entendiéramos de verdad lo que significa comulgar, les prometo que no saldríamos de la iglesia cada día hasta no haberle recibido. Acerquémonos, por tanto, con un corazón preparado, sin pecados mortales. Si hace mucho que no vengo a misa, tengo que confesarme para poder recibir a Cristo. Con verdadera fe nos acercamos a recibir a Cristo, el Señor, el pan vivo bajado del cielo. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. La misa ha terminado. Pueden ir en paz.